you refuse to give up. Um, congratulations on uh, on uh, agreeing another year's deal with Middlesbrough. Why have you decided to keep going? I just think Steve's been pestering me now for months, and he, his his argument is you can't leave on an empty stadium. You've got to see twenty five, thirty thousand fans behind you uh, and your team at the Riverside, and 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 finish on a high note where you know you've got their support and and. Uh, you know, I, I, I must admit, it, it is difficult to, to, to uh, when there's no fans there, to, to grasp what it's like. And he's been saying that for months. And, uh, you know, I have enjoyed it. Uh, there's been, there's been low, low moments as well. But overall, I think, we've, you know, I think myself and the staff have, have done a pretty good job of stabilising everything. And, uh, and, and now it's time to look to the future, really. And, uh, you know, I would like to get success for, for, for Steve, really. I think Steve Gibson's the reason I'm here. Um, I'm enjoying it. Uh, in the meeting that I had with him, you know, he's, he's not, he's not, you know, he knows his football as well. He knows we're not a lot missing. Uh, it's not like we're going to look for an entire team. We've already re-signed quite a lot of the, what I call the major, the, the major positions in the club. Uh, we're looking for one or two um, good players, and 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 he's determined to to get me these players, you know. And uh, I think between us, you know, we can come up. We're not going to spend money stupidly. We, I don't think I ever do that. Um, but we, we, you know, we want two or three players for the for the pre season, and 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 we want to have some fun. I think that's the thing. I talk to him, you know, at my age, and um, football's especially in the pandemic. It's it's been a hard, long slog uh, for managers and players. Um, but I, I don't think there's been enough humour. I think we've got to have some fun. We've got to try and uh, entertain everybody, and and I think that's why it's important that fans come by, um, because I think you know you get your vibes off the fans, whether it be good or bad. You know, I've even missed the ones away from home. You know, and I don't I don't want to finish my career without waving to the Bristol City fans and and one or two of the others away from home and thanking them for all these years. Uh, it would be sad if I had to do that. It is a good point Steve makes, isn't it? The fact that you know, if you were, if you had been to, to call it the day at the end of this season, you would, yeah. I mean, mind you, you missed that Bournemouth game with the trial with the thousand fans in. You would never have really had the experience of, of properly being the Middlesbrough manager in many ways. Would you? No, that's what he says. He says, "I know you've enjoyed it, Neil, and you're enjoying it, but it, trust me," he says, "until you've been in the stadium with twenty five, thirty thousand, um, you haven't witnessed what it what it's about up here." Um, and I have enjoyed everything about it. I've enjoyed living up here. And, you know, my family, Sharon and, and and William, have been up as well, and it's been great. Uh, you know, I think I think we. You know, it might be difficult. I, I owe a lot to Sean at the the Teesside Airport, if I'm honest, for for organising those flights, and uh, they're going to be back on soon. So it's you know, it's one of those things that it couldn't have tied in any better uh, for me. And I, I just want us to have some fun. I want the players to. You know, uh, give me everything. Um, you know, put their heads on the line. Everything. Play good football when we can, and 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 give the fans something to cheer about. What's been a a really depressing twelve months. I think we you know we've got to look now and and be bright and at, at the same time not give up on this season. I know we're you know we're long shots now with the with the results this week, but twelve games anything can happen in twelve games. So I don't just want us to peter out. I want us to try and look to next season, but look at how we can play against these teams in the running now uh, and what we can do, you know, what points we can get. And, and how long, before yesterday's meeting, how long ago had you thought that, yeah, I do fancy another year? Or, or were you were you swaying the other way at any point? Did you think that this might be the time to, to finally call it a day? It is hard because, you know, when there's no crowd in the, in the stadium, it is very difficult for managers. Uh, I think... I wouldn't like to think that I remembered my last season uh, stood on my own in the technical dugout uh, and, and, you know, listening to my own voice. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a strange, weird situation. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm hoping. That's why I still want us all to be careful up here. You know, until we've had a second injection and, uh, I mean, the government, we've got the greatest ever inject, you know, um, um, the way that the injections have been dished out. So we haven't got a you know, go silly now. We've got to make sure that we all get these injections uh, and that we can get these fans back on board. 
um, because it, 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 you know, that's what's going to really cheer everybody up. I think mentally and every to be able to, you know, walk down to the game on a Saturday and, you know, every home game I've had a young lad outside on the bridge chanting Middlesbrough from start. To, you know, he must be there all bloody weathers for two or three hours and he doesn't even watch the game. You know, and I think it means such a lot to people that we've got to try and put smiles back on the faces next year uh, and and really have a go. And, and how much of, of yesterday's meeting and, and the chat that you had with Steve was obviously about trying to convince you to stay, if indeed you needed much convincing, but then about next year, next season, and, and the players you want and what's possible and, and how far Steve can go. Because obviously we know that the financial implications that all clubs are dealing with and businesses and everybody is dealing with as a result of what's happened in the last year. Well, it's cost. I mean, it's costing millions every month, isn't it? You know, um, somebody's got to foot the bill. Um, you know, and and Steve's been doing that. I think that you know, I've I've been speaking to him for, for not just the, the, uh, this week, but over the last few weeks. In fact, couple of months, and telling him what I think that we need. Um, we couldn't quite do it in January, but you know, I think that we've improved since then, and and he knows. You know, four or five games now. We've both. I've asked him what he thought about certain games, and he said exactly what I've said. If we had him and him in our team, we'd have won that game. You know, and it's not really rocket science. It's just a. Uh, you know, we, we are very fortunate in the fact that we have not got to think about signing six or seven players. We've got a group of players that have played together and will have played together for quite a while. A group that have improved themselves on a very young age, very promising for the club. That we've got group, it's such a young age group. Uh, we're a bit short on the 24 to 29 year olds, um, and if we could sign, you know, two or three players to supplement the squad, um, you know, I think I think we, we we've got a, a very exciting um, few, you know, few years ahead of the club, uh, and hopefully I can start that off. And as you said, still 12 games to go this season, which you're not giving up on. And a trip to Swansea is uh, is always going to be a tough proposition with them, them chasing automatic promotion isn't it yeah I mean they're the good side aren't they he's you know he's got a, he's got a good group of players and they've done ever so well and as you saw the other night you need a little bit of uh, I don't know how to I don't know what to say without getting into trouble really um I mean they, they won the they won the game in the 94th minute and I blame Kevin Blackwell really it must be Kevin Blackwell because he he gave Kyle Norton his debut so he must be teaching him how to go down so it's Kevin Blackwell's fault, but that was quite embarrassed me when I saw it. I'll be, I will see Kyle on Saturday, but uh, it's uh, you know, I mean, to lose a game like that, I think Michael and Neil did ever so well not getting fined. Um, trips to Swansea in the past would have always been quite uh, quite fun for you, wouldn't it, as a, as a Cardiff manager? Yeah, I've not I've not had too many, if I'm honest. Um, um, we got battered one of the, on one of the games. When we tried to play in a different system, we we lost two players the day before a match, and tried to adjust, but we couldn't adjust. They were too good for us, really. So, but I'm, I'm I am looking forward to it. I think we can go anywhere and give them a game, mate. Um, whoever's in the league, I'm not bothered where the top of the league, you know, as we did at Norwich and, and Brentford, and and then you look down. I think we can, you know, it's not. I don't think that's a problem. It's how we are. Uh, as long, you know, if we have a twenty minute. Uh, Bristol City nightmare, then we'll lose to anybody in the league. And, and likewise, if we have a 90-minute Reading performance, we can beat anybody. So, you know, there, there's been a little bit of inconsistencies in that respect. But, but like I said, they're only a young group. You know, you forget how young a group they are in comparison with a lot of championship squads. And with you saying just a few minutes ago, well, you know, we're obviously we're a bit long shots now. Can, can that work in your favour now? Take a little bit of the, the pressure off and free them up. Well, we've nothing to lose, have we now? We've nothing to lose. We'll not be going down there to sh shop up. I don't think I've ever done that in my career, really. Um, so it's it's just one of those things. You've got to hope that your strikers can cause problems and that our defenders can can cope with the strike force that they've got. You know, I mean, they've got Ayu. Whether they'll be able to keep him next season, I'm not sure because you know, obviously, I'm aware of what wages he's on. But he's a good player, and in fairness to him, his attitude's been brilliant. He's not moaned about wanting to be here, there, and everywhere. And I think he's, you know, he's horrible and times, and I love it, me. I think he's just, I think he's a great player, me. So if he does find himself short at clubs next season, he's quite welcome to come up here. I have to talk about his wages, though. 
Well, no, we'll have to we'll have to have one of those go fund raising things, won't we? <laughs> Good luck at the weekend, Neil. Thank you. Thank you. Right, Aidan from Sky. Aidan from Sky. Hello, Neil, are you there? Where is it, Aidan? Yes, I've got you. How do you, mate? All right, nice to see you. Um, <clears throat> I want to take you back to 2003. You were Sheffield United manager, and I interviewed you on the side of the pitch down at Gillingham after you think you got a draw down there, and you said to me, you promised me faithfully, this is my last job in football. No, that's, this, that's me, darling, I'm going to retire to Cornwall. What on earth happened? I got let down badly by the owner at Sheffield United and it really soured me. And um, and when I left there, I, I couldn't leave and finish my career on a low with somebody I'd known 20 years. I felt really bitter and uh, eventually Simon Jordan, of all the people, he wanted me to just go and have a look and ended up working there. And Best thing that ever happened to me, because I loved it in London. I loved it at, uh, at Crystal Palace and uh, QPR. So it was, uh, it, you know, where I was born in Sheffield, I always thought below Watford was the pits and you would never go down there. Uh, but I actually enjoyed it and uh, and living down there and it, it gave me a new lease of life. So uh, that's the reason, really. I probably owe it all to, uh, you know, an ex-acquaintance of mine who, who I felt let me down. So you mentioned the importance of Steve Gibson in all this. I mean, you know, you worked for McCabe, Pavis... Riatori, Cellino, Parrish, Jordan. I mean, you've worked for the full gamut of characters and personalities down the years. Where does he sit among those guys? How, how different is he? Is he, is he as good as everyone says he used to work for? Uh, well, I, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be here if it weren't for him. Really, um, at the, the you know the time he uh, he asked me to come up, it, 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 you know he he sounded as if he needed help, and I was glad to come up and help him out, and uh, and it's turned out very good. I've I've really enjoyed working. With a young group of people, and um, by the way, Chilino, I never worked with him. It was Ken Bates, who was a lot better Ken Bates to work for, isn't it? <laughs> My God! And yeah, we don't go into that. Um, so, so it's um, you know you've 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 mentioned a few of my chairmen there, and to be still working at seventy two, having worked with all those chairmen, I bloody did well, am to really? Definitely, yeah. I mean, you must have seen enough of the club and the squad. The owners you've already mentioned to believe that rather than just stabilise the club as you've already done, but you must believe you can mount another promotion push. Do you think you're far away from from that right now? I mean, right now you're only five points off the playoffs. Yeah, we haven't. I don't think we've got enough goals in the team at the moment. Um, but you never know in football. I think, like I say, I think we can go and win anywhere in the league. Twelve games to go, anything can happen. Uh, I think Barnsley and Cardiff. Are, showing that with the six or seven wins on the trot that they've had. Um, we've got a difficult few games now. When you look at the Swansea, um, Stoke City, are you with me? Uh, two tough games um, to start with. Um, but we've nothing to lose now. You know, I think every, everybody will more or less have written us off. But while there's, when there's 12 games to go, you know, you can't, you can't just um, fold over. You've got to have a go. And there'll be still, there's still some players at the club playing for the future, really. Um, that I'm going to be looking at to see will they contribute next season uh, will I want them to stay or will I want them to go uh, now that I'm here it's up to them now to show me that they want to be part of that If I'd said to you in 2003 that day that you'd be managing in 18 years time at the age of 72 would you have thought it likely or not? No not really I did I, I, I did plan to, to call it a day I think it was 55 I think it was um, so I, rem I remember thinking that I will finish at Sheffield United, because that was my that was my dream, you know that was my dream job, and and I saw that. I mean, when I took over at Sheffield United, the, the crowd was eight thousand three hundred against Port Vale, and and when I left, the average crowd was twenty five and a half. We'd built the stadium up, we'd got a new um, four million uh, um, academy, and we'd done everything. It was an amazing uh, seven years that uh, to put the infrastructure in uh, where they are now, and it, and it's. Uh, so, but I, I did. I thought that I would just call it a day and come back up to Bramall Lane to watch games here and there and, and enjoy myself. Are you with me? But you know, I don't regret it now calling it a day because, like I say, I would never have gone to London, uh, and I had one of the best years of my life at QPR, 
um, you know, have him turn that club round, working with people like Bria Tory, which was, uh, you know, um, let's say a challenge, should I? Uh, I'll say a challenge. If you've ever watched that four-year plan, it's worth it now and then if you're bored. Uh, having, <laughs> having a look. Getting success despite that. <laughs> Uh, listen, thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Thanks, Ed. Dawn, where are you? Hello, Neil. How can you see me? Hi, love. I've got you. Hello. Um, so, did Steve Gibson actually have to persuade you to stay, or were you pretty much already there? He's been doing it for for weeks, really, Dawn. He's been on about you can't you can't possibly think about calling it a day when you've got no crowds when you've not been appreciated when you you've not seen 25 30,000 at the riverside and and you can get them back in next season and all that I've had it all for months now um but I mean the big thing was was obviously Sharon and, and the way that we are um health wise um Sharon's okay she's been okay with it um she will be going home and and uh and because there's so much to do down in Cornwall, uh, so she will be going home now, um, and 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 I will. Uh, and that's why I said about I owe it all to Sean at the Teesside Airport, really, for organising these flights for me, um, because it would be very difficult for her. Whereas now she's going to come up for long weekends and weeks, and and we're going to have a bit of time. Hopefully, going to places that we're not being able to go. You know, we've drove, we've seen all these places like Barnard Castle and all these things. No. You know, but we've not been able to go and have a coffee or afternoon tea and and do nice things other than the pressure of football. So I'm sure, hopefully, it'll it'll work out well, uh, and I can give it one more go because I do want us to enjoy it. I want everybody to enjoy it at the club. You know, I think there's too much pressure, and I mean, I'm not bothered about getting the sack. So I'm in an unusual situation, really. I, I want us to all enjoy it. I want them enjoying coming into training. I want you lot to enjoy my press conferences. I want everybody to enjoy themselves in a, such a horrible, miserable time. We're coming through that now and light at the end of the tunnel. And, and now I hope that, you know, we've already put season tickets on, on sale and I want us to fill that ground now with season ticket holders and people who haven't been for years. I want them to come out of the cobwebs now and dust them off and, and get a ticket and come and watch us next year. You always said that Sharon would play a big part in your decision making. So she's obviously happy for you to stay. Yeah, she was. I mean, we've been, we've talked about it a while ago. Um, we would like to spend some time. We've got a place in Italy, and and we would like to spend some time. I think the problem we've got is Sharon's had had, had illnesses, um, and and I'm seventy two. And you, you know, you when you read the news nowadays, there's always somebody that's popping the clogs at younger than me and and so I don't want to die on the job done if I'm honest so I'd, I'd like to I'd like to finish on a high um, and I would like to see a little bit of what me and Sharon love you know we do like to to go out to different places and and have a coffee here and there and at the moment our afternoon out is is driving into Darlington and getting a Nero in the cup village in the square there and you know and it's I mean, I'm really, really looking after her, aren't I? Me, I, tr I treat her like nobody, you know. You're an old romantic, really, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. 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 And it comes to something on a day out, going to the flipping supermarket, doesn't it? Really. Um, so yes. So as far as this season is concerned, you were saying long shots, you know, to reach the playoffs and all of that. Is there any sense in which you think actually it might be quite a good thing if you don't? go up this season you've got more time to sort of mold the team to how you want it to be for a, for a proper promotion push next season well the answer to that is is no uh, you should never refuse going up um, somebody said that to me when was at QPR and Sheffield United when we went up when it looked like uh, I think Leeds were going to pass us at Sheffield and um, you know would it be better you know or and I, no it didn't it wouldn't be better and I'd rather go up now and um, if I'm honest, then I think we should be we should be another ten, twelve points better off. So um, it's our own fault, um, but it just shows you. You know, I, I've always wanted to be as successful as I can be, and and I think we could have been a lot far higher. Uh, yeah, we needed a bit of luck and 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 things going for us in in other departments as well. Um, so no, I, I would if we could win the next twelve games, I'd be absolutely delight, delighted. If I'm honest, Don. Because I don't think anybody would fancy playing us in the playoffs. 
Uh, but it's getting there now. It's getting there. You know, all the teams have got to drop points as well. You've created a, a great sort of feel-good factor at the training ground since you arrived. Um, what's been the players' response when you when you told them you were staying? Well, I haven't told them yet. Uh, they wow. didn't. They didn't know till quarter to ten this morning. Because I thought if I tell Tavernier on Tuesday, he, he's going to be telling every Tom Dick and Harry, isn't he? All over the country, they'll all be and they'll all be on the twitters and God knows what else these young lads do nowadays. So I thought you might as well keep my mouth shut. So nobody knew till quarter to ten. Um, listen, there'll be one or two lads disappointed. I'm staying, I'm sure, because <laughs> you you get that at every club. But uh, it's up to them now to um, to to get behind me and and try and be a successful because. It's wonderful, you know, when you've got success at a club. As a player, you never forget it, and, and as a manager, you don't. So I want them to have some success um, in the next sort of period I'm here, uh, whether it be this season or next. It won't be for the lack of trying this season. Uh, whether we've got enough, um, like I say, enough goals in the team, I'm not sure this season. Um, what have you enjoyed most about being at Middlesbrough over the last however many months it is? Getting up in the morning. Um you know, getting up in the morning, looking forward to the day. I think uh, football and, and jobs all over the country and it's such a horrible time of the pandemic. Um, whereas I love to come into work and I love to see the lads and, and I've, I've loved having Sharon, you know, Sharon and we've gone with the dogs and things like that. It's it, it's in, in such a, a, a difficult period, it, it's been great to, 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 to look forward to, to, to tomorrow. Um, you know, in football... At my age, you don't, you can't think about tomorrow as such. You, you, you know, you, you, it's, you know, you want success yesterday, really. But you know, it gives us a bit more time now to to try and have a go. I, it won't be for the lack of trying in the last twelve games. I'll tell you now, because I still think it's it's a doable thing. Me, if my lot put take the finger out and stop making stupid mistakes, there's no reason why we can't win nearly all the games. So I won't be giving that up, but uh, at the same time, I'm looking forward to, um, you know, sort of tinkering a little bit, bringing two or three players in, and and giving it a right good go. And when you come into work every day with with the young lads, does that help to keep you young as well? I think so. I mean, um, it's hard. You, you 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 know, as soon as you're out the game, as soon as you finish the game, and and you go back to Cornwall, your phone never goes. The phone never never rings, and 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 you don't really want to watch the telly. You don't want to do this, and you you do become lost. Um, and if I hadn't got Sharon at, at certain times, it would have been it would have been difficult in that respect, because your mind does work quick with these young lads, and and the way I am with them, I, I do like humour. I like people to um, you know enjoy coming into work and and. And I, I give my players some stick at times, and, and, and quite rightly so. I'm sure, I'm sure they give me a bit behind my back as well. Um, so it, it is that that um, daily thing. And I suppose when you just cut that off, Dawn, and there's nothing there, it's very difficult. I would imagine, um, you know, if you're not careful, you become old very quickly, you know. And, and I suppose, um, you know, we're very fortunate that we've got all the medical people up here. Our, our doctor's brilliant up here. Uh, young Robert, and and uh, so you know you feel as if you're very lucky, especially at a time like this, to to be looked after with the the the, the proper medical people as well. So it's, uh, you know, hopefully he'll get the WD forty out the dock and and help me on for another twelve months. And just finally, for me, um, talking about medics and doctors and things, um, what's the injury situation like? Are you expecting any more players back this weekend? No, I don't think I don't think we've got any. But I think there's only Ashley, um, really. Uh, Tav Tav picked up a bit of a knock, but um, you know whether he'll be available. I would imagine. I, I just don't know at the moment in that respect. Um, so it'll be it'll be interesting. You know, like you said, we've had so many games. I noticed the other night, Dawn, um, when Derby played Cardiff, they made six. They left six players out. And if, if I had a choice of picking them six to leave, I, I would have done against us. Pity he didn't do it against us, I think. Thank you very much, Neil, and good luck. Great to see you stay. Thank you, Don. Chris from Time Tees. Chris from Time Tees. Hiya, Neil. How are you doing? Yep, got you, Chris. No bother. Um, tell me a little bit about the conversation that you had with Mrs Warnock about staying, because did she take much convincing? No, I think she she was the one 
that said you ought to do it. Um, she's got so much to do in Cornwall now. We, you know, we've had so many moves. We feel, you'll all have been in there, not as much as me, but you'll all have been there. We've got a garage full of junk. We've got a game, a, what I call my games room with a pool table, and I've never seen the pool table for five years. It's just full of junk, letters and all sorts of things. Uh, and so she's determined. We've got wood, we've got lines of clothes that we've got in different bedrooms, and she's going to clear the lot out. And really, it's better her doing that when I'm not there because I don't throw anything away. I don't throw that away, love. Keep that one. I want to wear that another time. She says, you haven't worn it for 20 years. You know, um... So I don't know what I'm going to do. I've still got my blazers and slacks and, and ties from my promotions at, at Huddersfield, Notts County, Sheffield United. I don't want to throw them away. So I'm hoping that I can... I'm hoping that the club will take them off me and, and, and do something with them. I don't like throwing things like that away, if I'm honest. It sounds as if... Um... From, from what you're saying, you're, you're sort of relishing the challenge of next season. I'm sure you've said before as well that Sharon had, had said, you're crap at washing up, so go and get a, go and get a manager's job somewhere. Yeah, I'm, I think I think at the minute, with, with the situation being, well, if I'd have been in Cornwall without a job, I think she would have fell out with me a few times, if I'm honest. I am not the best um, to have helping her around the house. And Amy, our daughter, she somebody took great, about six, eight weeks ago, um, when I think Sharon made up her mind, really. She said, you know, if you if you think back, Mum, whenever Dad's at home, he gets on your nerves. So you, you might as well let him have another, you know, that work in a bit while and you sort the house out. Because when you're together at home, you fall out, you know. And uh, that was my daughter. And, and she's right, really. So I wanted to get rid of all the rubbish at home now. And then and then when I do call it a day, we can, uh, we can look to... The, to without having to clear everything up, we will already be set. Um, no sign of calling, calling it a day yet, and certainly it, it seems as if hopefully next season you'll be able to experience being Middlesbrough manager with a with a backing of the fans, certainly in the stadium at least. Yeah, I think, I mean, Steve's been on about that for weeks. He's, you know, you cannot call it a day when you've not tasted the fans behind you. Um, you know, 20, he always says 25, 30,000 is unbelievable at the Riverside. Uh, and I'm hoping that they'll get behind me and people that haven't been for a while, um, just have a season ticket to have a look what it's like again next year and come and get behind me. Because, you know, I want everybody to in, in the area to get behind us next year and, and let's have a right go. I know you were saying that, um, you know, you would take promotion this season. Um, you would take promotion any which way to get into the Premier League. Do you feel like you've got unfinished business in the Premier League? And I suppose, do you feel that Middlesbrough has got unfinished business in the Premier League? Um, I don't really know enough about the history, if I'm honest. I, I only know about Steve and, and what he's done. Are you with me? I, I, I see, um, you know, the type of players that you had in in the Premier League in them days, the Italians, you know, because I actually dealt with Gianni Palladini at QPR. He was he was fantastic for me, but he's not thought of as well up here for some reason. For some reason, <laughs> but uh, he was amazing for me. I loved him. So it, it, it's um, you know the, 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 I'm sure that the Middlesbrough would cope with going back in the Premier League. For myself, I'm not bothered about it anymore in in the Premier League. I didn't I didn't enjoy. It. I never got any support uh, really at any club I was at. Every I seemed to get all the um, rough end of the you know whatever they call it. No, so I didn't get any financial support at QPR or Sheffield really. Um, Notts County, not at all, you know. Um, in fact, the only support I got at Notts County, I stayed loyal to him, uh, turned Chelsea down and then he sacked me six months later, you know, it's uh, football at the, at the best. So uh, I did say to him, it'll be interesting to see where Notts County go now, pal. Uh, and uh, and I look at him now and, then, you know, not pulling any trees up, are they? No, no, absolutely, absolutely. Um, do you feel like the squad that you've got at the minute, if... if if you're going to get into the Premier League, do you, do you think you have to sort of um, put pressure on the likes of, of Swansea and, and, and what have you going forward in the weeks ahead? Yeah, I think I think if you look at the top the top four clubs, I, I don't think that I don't think they're catchable really. I don't think they're going to lo lose enough points for us to catch them with the games we've got. Um, but I think the other two positions are I think Reading and Reading and, and Bournemouth with Cardiff and Barnsley. 
I think, you know, they're the four that's going to be fighting out. Barnsley at the moment look to be absolutely flying. Um, so they're, they're the ones. But, you know, we've got it all to do because we have to win a lot more games than them. So it's... Um, but it won't be for the lack of trying. You know, I think uh, we've no pressure on ourselves, really. We've got, we've got some good players. We need, you know, we need things to, to go well. And, and you just never know. And have you got an idea about next season and, and the sort of business you'd like to do in the summer and how you want the... The squad to, to look for next season? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I don't think we need that that much, if I'm honest. I'm not looking at major overalls. I'm looking at, you know, um, two or three players in different, you know, positions and uh, uh, a little bit more a different type of player that we've got at the moment. Um, and just, just sort of last one, really. You're staying for another year. Can you sort of sum up, you know, the enjoyment that you've had of, of living in the North East in the, in the time that you've been here? I just, well, I mean, we did 30 miles the other day, me and Sharon, and we took a coffee, a, a flask of coffee and a sandwich. We got a sandwich at the garage, lovely crab crab sandwich at the at the garage on the way to North Allerton. And, uh, and then we did, like I say, 30 miles. We stopped off and some of the views, you know, we saw blinky buzzards and all sorts of nature things out there. Um, and it's beautiful. It's, you know, it's it's um, it's really, I think it just, it's the type of, countryside you know i went up to the beach when we could when we were allowed to i went up to what do they call that saltman. saltman that was that was wonderful the fish and chips there wow so it was you know we've, we've looked around i haven't been to my daughter my sister's yet unfortunately she only lives about 40 minutes away but i've not been able to go and see her um, so hopefully i'll be able to get down the road and and, and see carol in the next in the next uh, sort of few weeks or months when we're allowed to um, but I, I have loved it. I have loved that, and and I like where I live, um, just being close to the training ground. Um, so I, I hate having to get in your car and driving thirty minutes, forty minutes. Uh, you know, you waste so much time on the road, don't you? So I, it's been it's been lovely. It's it's worked out well, and I always work well when I'm working for somebody. When I'm working for somebody that I want to do well for, even at my age, I, I want to. You know, show Steve what I'm made of, and and uh, I've I've enjoyed the relationship with him. It, it's 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 not I know it's it's not really been a chairman and manager. I have spoke to him and told him my feelings, and he's been he's been you know, incredible for me as well. So it's a mutual thing that we've got, you know. And uh, and I said, look, let's give it a go. I've no divine right to to win games this season or next season, but I'll be doing my best. Um, because it does take pressure off, off the owner as well, you know, especially somebody that's that's done so much for the for the not just the club but the area. Uh, you know, I find it amazing everywhere I go. Some, you know, he's done something there. Um, so I want to I want to repay him uh, and try and get him back to where it, where where the club should be. Really, is it too soon to think about not next season but the season after? Oh my God, no! <laughs> Don't even go down that far. <coughs> Um, I would imagine by then I might be forgetting things about you know the season after. I'm, you know I'm going into a room now and thinking what did I come in for? And I'm sure you all the same, you younguns, you've all done it. But um, you know you, you do start thinking, wow, oh, is it time? Is it going or what? But no, you just have to keep going and uh, and hopefully, um, like you say, there's nothing more important than your health. All I wish for is when I see a black cat crossing the road like I did last week at Irworth. I don't wish anything about promotion or anything. I just wish good health and happiness. Uh, that's all you can wish for, really, with me and Sharon and the kids. Um, and, and that's what I want it to continue, really.